Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I blend eyeshadows and how I cut the crease. So these two topics are like the most, are the topics that I get questions on the most, is how I blend my eyeshadows, how I make them pigmented, um, how I cut the crease, how I make everything so clean and sharp and bright. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. I'm going to be showing you guys how to cut your crease two different ways. So I'm going to do the half cut crease and a full cut crease because those are the cut creases that I do the most. So let's just go ahead and get started. So a big part about blending your eyeshadow and having pigments and shadows is the base that you're using. I always use a concealer as a base. I've never used a actual primer or like a paint pot or anything like that. Um, I've always used concealer. So my favorite concealer to use is the Maybelline Master Conceal. This is the shade 20 Light and this is what I basically use all the time. I use this to clean up under my brows as well. You can use as much or as little concealer as you would like. I find that when I use a little bit more concealer, um, the shadows are just a lot more pigmented that way. So I'm just going to paint on some of this concealer. Uh, my eye is stained because yesterday I did a look and it just stained my eye. So, so I'm going to paint it on and then I'm just going to get a little sponge and I'm going to blend it out. You can blend this out with a brush, a finger, you can just pat it out with whatever you want. Um, I just like using a sponge. I feel like it makes the base a lot more smooth. I'm going to make sure to get all the way in this inner corner and also out here past the brow because you never know. You might be blending um, a little bit past where you thought you would. So. so my phone shut off while I was recording this video. This is why I hate filming YouTube videos because I have to do it on my phone and it runs out of space like that and it's annoying. Basically what I was saying was I didn't set my base after I had blended it out with a sponge and everything. I just kind of let it be there. I didn't set it with a powder, with an eyeshadow, with nothing. And I'm going in with my eyeshadow now. So I'm going to use the Androgyny palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. And I'm using this dark blue shade right here. You're going to use a smaller brush. So this is the Morphe M506. Um, compared to like a regular sized blending brush, this one is the Morphe M513. This is like their size difference, so I like to use a smaller brush because it just really packs on the eyeshadow where I want it. And this one is also kind of a blending brush as well, so once I'm done packing on the eyeshadow, I can also blend it out but keep it in that little area that I put it in in the first place, you know what I mean? So basically what I did was I got the eyeshadow and I just started packing it on. I did not do swiping motions, I did not do circular motions, all I did was get the eyeshadow and pack it on. So that is what you want to do. You just want to put it down in whichever shape you want. So for me, I'm going for a more circular shape, as you can see. So I'm just really going to pack that eyeshadow on until I get it to as pigmented as I want it. And now I'm going to start blending. So now I want a little bit of product on there, but I don't want too much. So now I'm going to go just on the edge of this eyeshadow. And now I'm going to do circular motions and really start blending out this eyeshadow. I'm not going to get a big brush and just go like this because that's going to get the eyeshadow everywhere. And that's not what I want. I want this eyeshadow to be pigmented but blended. But I want to keep it right in this little shape that I put it so I have space for all of the other eyeshadows that I want to use. So I'm just going to, again, like I said, use small circular motions. A little bit of swiping motions. But I'm really going to take this in sections. I'm not going to go like across the entire the entire um, eyeshadow <laughs> circle. I'm just going to work in sections here so I can really make sure that I'm giving each section enough like time to blend out and enough um, work. So Okay, now that this eyeshadow is pretty blended out, it doesn't have um, such a harsh line. And as you can see, I blended it out, but I didn't take it all the way up to my brow bone because I still am going to add one more color. So I really want to make sure, depending on how many colors 
you're gonna add is how much you want to blend out each shade so if I'm gonna use like four colors in the crease I really want to make sure each each color has enough space to be blended out I don't want if I'm using four colors I don't want to blend out one color all the way up to here and then have to squeeze the other three in this little amount of space if that makes sense so just depending on like how many shades you're using and the exact look that you're going for you want to make sure you know where to stop your blending and like where to actually place your eyeshadows now i'm going to take my september rose slush palette um this is one of my favorite palettes ever i do have a discount code with them if you guys do want to purchase this palette as you can see i've used many shades in here a lot of these are my favorites but today i'm going to use the yellow in here this is called banana and this is my favorite yellow ever it blends out so nicely and it's very pigmented so i'm just gonna get that on another morphe m506 but this one is um it's just like a different brush and this one is also a little bit newer so the shape is a little bit more i guess like straight so basically i'm gonna get this color tap off some of the excess and this time i'm not gonna pack on my shadows on top of the blue i'm just gonna start doing the circular motions on top this is gonna like kind of get that blending started and if I want it to be more pigmented I can just go in with more eyeshadow but I don't want to pack it on everybody does it differently but this is just how I do it so I'm just gonna start and I'm just gonna start like I guess right here and I'm just gonna start blending the same thing with the blue you really want to like take your time in each little section to make sure that one section is not like more blended out or one part of the eye isn't more blended out than the other it's just all about taking your time so as you can see I'm starting to add that yellow and the more layers I put the more pigmented it is so you just want to take your time and really really blend this out Okay, so basically I have just placed on the yellow and as you can see in between the blue and the yellow is green because you guys already know you learned this in kindergarten blue and yellow makes green so as you're blending it out even if it seems like those colors can't blend in together they're gonna find like the eyeshadows themselves they will like ha meet in between to hide like have a color in between that'll even blend them together like they'll blend themselves almost so as you can see I didn't have to add the green it just kind of popped up as I kept blending so once I'm here um, the blend is pretty nice but I'm just gonna keep on going you want to keep going back in with the blue back in with the yellow back in with the blue back in with the yellow just like honestly do those steps over and over and over and that's how you get like the best blend so now I'm gonna go back in with blue and this time I'm not really worried about packing on shadow because as you can see I have like a lot of blue there I'm just really focused on blending this blue a little bit better into the green and a little bit more into the yellow just so that every single part of the crease and all of the colors are really blending into each other nicely i'm gonna really take off the excess um eyeshadow and i'm gonna very lightly go on the edge of the green where it's fading into the yellow like very lightly since i didn't use an actual green I don't have a brush that has green on it and I don't really intend on using a brush for green so I'm just like really lightly going on the edges like I'm barely touching my skin but I can already see the green blending in a little bit more so after I finish doing this I'm gonna go back in with the yellow and then back in with the blue and you guys are just gonna see how many times I go back in with my shadows so you guys can see just how long this takes me and how repetitive it is but it's gonna look so gorgeous in the end and it's gonna be amazing.
So this is the Morphe M562, and I just use this with a little bit more yellow just to blend it into my brow bone a little bit more. But basically, I am very happy with this blend. Now I'm going to be moving on to cutting the crease. Okay, so we're going to move on to cutting the crease now. So to cut the crease, um, basically... What I do is I'll use any concealer. It doesn't really matter what concealer I'm going to use because I'm going to be using two. Um, so the one that I'm using first, it doesn't really matter what you use. You just need something to like mark down your cut crease line. And then yeah, I'll show you guys. But basically, the two brushes that I like to use are... This one is the first one. This is the EIG Show eyeshadow brush. This is the E828 brush. And this is just what it looks like. It is very flat and synthetic. It is kind of like pointed at the top almost but it is super flat and I really like this to cut the crease another alternative is this brush right here this is from Vanity Planet it comes in I think their beginner set um, but it's kind of the same thing just very similar very um, flat it's also yeah it's just very flat um, and this one is a little bit like larger like wider I guess today I'm gonna be using the EIG show brush so I'm just going to get some concealer. I'm going to pack it on on both sides. So right now this is just what my brush is looking like. And to cut the crease, I always use stamping motions. I never really go like this anymore. I always stamp kind of in the same way that I would pack on the eyeshadow first. I am stamping on this concealer. So I'm going to start... I'm gonna kind of look straight and see where my crease is and every time if you have hooded eyes if you have not hooded eyes no matter what I think it's always best to go above the crease so that whenever you're looking straight or anything whatever any like angle that your eyes are in you can still really see the cut crease that you worked so hard to create and it's not just like being buried in your crease if you know what I mean so I'm just going to kind of like let my eye fold a little bit so I can really see where it's folding and go like right above it so that's like my little stamp of kind of how high I want to go with my cut crease. So now I'm just going to start stamping my way in. You can start in the inner corner and go out. You can start all the way on the outside and go in. You can do whatever your heart desires. But for teaching purposes, I just wanted to show you guys how I like get my little mark of how high I'm going to go. Okay, so this is just like a guideline. Once I have this guideline, I'm really going to start perfecting the line, getting it as crisp and clean as possible, um, getting the shape down that I want. So I'm going to just really take this slow. Okay, so as you can see, I've basically stamped my cut crease shape. Um, I do kind of like to bring it out a little bit further, like to the outer corner, because I don't know, I'd rather have like a bigger cut crease than a smaller cut crease, because the bigger cut crease, you can just really blend eyeshadow and kind of like blend it in. But a shorter cut crease, I just don't like how it looks on me personally. So that's why I bring it out a little bit. So this is my basic shape. And like I said, I'm just going to keep going back and forth. So the reason I said that the concealer that you use right now doesn't matter is because I'm going to take this off. So I'm going to get the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water and a wipe. It can be wet, it can be dry, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to get some of this Micellar Water and put it on the wipe. And I'm going to take off where my cut crease line is and under anything under that I'm going to take off. All of that extra eyeshadow all of the extra concealer that is under there because um, the more like piled up products you have the less smooth your base will be and the more everything has to like 
mix in together so as you can see like right under here the concealer is not its true color it's like mixed with the purple eyeshadow that's not what you want with a cut crease you really want the cut crease to be like a very blank base so that's why I'm going in with the makeup remover and just taking off everything that's under this cut crease line and just leaving it nice and blank and clean so the next concealer that we use on top will be the most important. You want to use a concealer that you really like, that works for you and your base, that works for eyeshadows, whatever it is. So I'm just going to take my time because I, I just spent a long time making this cut crease. I don't want to mess up the line. So I'm just going to, you know, slowly remove all of this. So next I'm going to take the Makeup Revolution Concealer. This is the shade C1. This is like the lightest shade that there is. It's not quite white. Um, you can use a white if you would like. I find that it's light enough for me. So um, I'm going to use this. It is a very light concealer and I like to use it because I want my base to be very bright and I want it to just like give whatever eyeshadow I pack on top like the, the best chance I guess I don't know whatever so basically I'm just gonna get the same brush but I'm gonna like clean it off and then I'm gonna pack it on with this um, makeup revolution concealer <laughs> favorite white shade is from the James Charles palette um, with Morphe so it's this shade right here and I'm just gonna use that to basically set my concealer so I'm just gonna get a good amount of that on a brush and just kind of pack it on I'm just going to blend this outer corner so I'm gonna start with the blue right at the edge of this cut crease so that it's not a harsh line now I'm going to get the yellow that I use and like before I'm going to blend this as well and I'm just going to blend this right on top of the blue just to really make sure that the blue is blended out as well and it's going to kind of be obviously cohesive with the crease so this is just going to like tie in the look. I basically went ahead and did the lower lash line. I put some highlight in my inner corner. I never really like to highlight my brow bone anymore. I really like to keep it nice and clean because it really shows off the blend a lot better. And now I'm going to be going in with lashes. And okay, guys, so these are the lashes that I designed with the KK Collection. If you guys don't know and don't follow me on Instagram, I designed a pair of lashes. Um, there's only one eyelash in here because the other one I just put glue on it and it's drying But this is the style sky like I said, it's in collaboration with the KK collection um, If you guys are interested in buying these I'm about to put them on right now If you guys are interested in buying these then I will leave the link down below I will also leave my Instagram down below. So um, Yeah, and I also have a discount code. It's just makeup by disqua um, So that will save you some money, but yeah, these are the lashes that I will be using today So now we're going to move on to this eye right here. Like I said, this eye is going to be a full cut crease. This one was a half cut crease. This is a full cut crease. So basically, the only thing different that I'm going to be showing you guys is how I cut the crease. Um, I'm still going to be kind of explaining and like reiterating what I said before with all the blending and everything. So I just prime my eyes with the same Maybelline Master Conceal, the same shade, everything the same that I did before. I'm going to get the Zulu Palette by Juvia's Place. And I'm going to be taking the purple shade that is in there. I love this purple shade. It's one of my favorites in my entire collection. So I'm just going to use this brush. This is an EIG Show blending brush. This is the E811 brush. And I'm just going to take this with more eyeshadow and just pack it on. So since this is a full cut crease and I am going to wing it out and everything, I want to make sure that I'm getting the shadow there as well. So... I'm just going to kind of get out here and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cut the crease either way but you do want to make sure that you're getting some shadow there. Go back in with the brush that I was using before and I'm going to 
like before start blending out in little circular motions just blending the very edges of this eyeshadow I am going to be adding quite a few colors on top of this so I really don't want to blend out this eyeshadow too far up because I want to make sure I have enough space for the other colors that are going to be on my eyeball as well So I'm going to take this pink shade from the September Rose um, Slush Palette. This is one of my favorites. I said this earlier. This is one of my favorites and I do have a discount code um, if you guys do want to purchase. Take that pink and I'm really not going to take that much of it because I don't really need to blend. Basically, I'm just using this pink as a transition color from the purple to the orange that I'm going to use. So I really don't need that much of it. I just need a little bit of it to, to be on the edge of the purple. So next I'm going to take orange and I'm going to take this same September Rose palette and I'm going to take the orange that is in there. This is a very, very neon orange. I am going to be using the James Charles palette for one of the shades, which is going to be the yellow. But I'm not, I don't really like, okay, like don't kill me, but I don't really like the, the orange that is in the James Charles palette. It's nice, but it's just not as like vibrant and neon as this orange, which is why this one is like barely there anymore, like... I've used all of it but the reason I use so many different palettes for one look is because sometimes like my favorite shades are not all in the same palette and I really want like look at that look at that like how do you even get that pigmented if I really want like the best outcome for my looks I I'm gonna have to use a bunch of different palettes to really get like my favorite colors from each palette but anyways So I'm going to take the Morphe X James Charles palette again and I'm going to take the yellow shade in there and that is going to go on top of the orange. This is just going to be the last shade that we use.
I feel pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting my crease. So I'm gonna use the same techniques that I did on this eye right here, except I'm just gonna be winging it out all the way to like my, the end of my brow. Okay, so I'm gonna take the same EIG Show um, brush, E828. So I'm gonna start by packing, well not packing, but like patting the concealer down and just like stamping it, so. So as you can see, I'm just really taking my time. By now, I kind of know how far up I like to take my cut creases. Cut creases are my favorite, like, I look to do. If you follow me on Instagram, they're really the only thing I do. <laughs> um, and cut creases are hard, and they're hard to, like, get the shape that you want. It's hard to, like, I guess, master it. Okay, so like I did on the other side, if you wanted to do a half cut crease, you basically just would stop here. But as a full cut crease, you just want to keep it going. Some people like their cut creases to be... The only word I know how to describe it is like loopy. So it's going to go like up in this shape and then it's going to go down and back up. Some people really like to take the little dip, like to take it really low. Some people like to keep it almost straight. Honestly, my cut creases can come out different all the time. So it's just, I guess, whatever I'm feeling that day. So once I get to here, I'm just gonna keep stamping. And as you can see, I didn't make it quite like smooth right on this little edge right here, but I just wanna kinda get the, the basic shape down and then I will go ahead and keep like perfecting it. So the same thing that I did on this side, I'm gonna do on this side. I'm gonna get my wipe and some Garnier Micellar water and I'm just going to kind of take off all of the concealer and purple shadow that is underneath that line that I just made. So the quality is about to change. It's about to get a lot worse because I recorded the next few clips in slow motion without even realizing. So the quality is all just different. It's not as good and I'm very, very sorry. You can still see what I'm like doing and stuff, so that's good. But um, yeah, the quality isn't the best, so I apologize for that. But I, when I film, I film by myself, so I can't always see what's going on. It's kind of difficult, but yeah, enjoy. And I'm just going to go over the entire cut crease now. I'm going to get as close to this line as I can, you know, really making sure I am making the sharpest cut crease that I can. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna do like a kind of winged liner but with eyeshadow I'm just gonna use the same exact um, shades that I used in my crease and yeah we're just gonna kind of blend it upwards so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get some tape so before I start because I don't want anything to like transfer and I don't want anything to be too like wet while I'm doing this I'm just gonna get I'm gonna get some more white eyeshadow this is from the James Charles palette I'm gonna pack it right along the line of the cut crease. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with the purple from the Juvia's Place palette again. And I'm just going to place that right 
right along here like I would a regular winged liner. I'm actually going to use a smaller brush. Okay, so basically this look is all done. I'm just going to go ahead and do my lower lash line and lashes and I will be back to close out this video. So I have just finished this look right here. I topped it off with some lashes. These are from Mila's Cosmetics in the style Fuego and this is what these look like. So those are on this eye, did some inner corner highlights and basically we are done with these looks. So I hope you guys really learned um, my techniques on blending, packing on eyeshadows, making them super pigmented, how I cut my crease. These are just what works for me. These tips and tricks um, have really stepped up my eyeshadow game and I'm very happy with where I am skill-wise. So I hope this helped you guys out. If it did, please let me know down below and give this video a thumbs up. If you guys have any other video suggestions that you want to see from me, leave that down below as well. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.